So apart from the 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 issue of uh, the, the moral lessons that we can learn, we we also have strong factual lessons to learn from the culture that uh, he projected from his work, and that is the belief system of the African people, not just the Yoruba people, that there is a real hereafter, and that if we have this belief, it should, as a matter of fact, um, have strong influence on our actions. Uh, the man who, for want of pan wine, uh, decided to follow his pan wine tap star into the world of the dead, had to see so many things. He, he had to come to uh, come to uh, come face to face with so many challenges, some which he surmounted, you know, and uh, that is also a lesson for us even now, that uh, in our pursuits, in our activities, we should always know that we are living just at the fringes of of the other world, and that we have with us, among us, and uh, from us, and across where we are, people from the other side, those who have been where we are today, and who are on the other side, and that we also, uh, necessarily, we have to be where they are at some point or the other. Now, those are important lessons, which um, I think we have decided over time to overlook uh, because of um, what some people perceive as the weakness of Titrola, basically his grammatical uh, expression. But simply, here was a man, a clever man, who wanted to communicate beyond his immediate audience, who were his Yoruba folks. If he had written in, in Yoruba, his reach would probably have been Dio Fagunwa's reach at that time. But he wanted to reach further. He wanted, to, he wanted the world to see what he is living in. He, and in a matter of... Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, he did achieve that. He shocked the world. It was like a culture shock. He did shock the world. Not only shocked the world, he also shook the world. You know, and that was his objective. And so, for as a writer with objective, I would say he achieved nearly hundred percent of his objective. He reached his audience. He achieved fame, and possibly also some handsome fortune for his work. And so, for a writer, that was a uh, that was a stroke of. Uh, Ingenuity on it on its part. Okay, now let's relate it to today's world. Take, looking at it back, pre-independence, <coughs> and then connecting it to what you know. You've mentioned the metaphysical, but is there any other lesson? Is there any other connection to today's to society? Looking at pre-independence and now. Yes, um, so many, of course, um, that we can still draw even from that um, work. Hilarious as the work may seem, there are still so many. From the main character itself, that, that innominate man, that unnamed man, we can see the, the wealthy Nigerian of today. You know, full of himself, believing that he can reach and get that which he desires. Not looking at his neighbors, not looking at his uh, immediate environment. You know, just um, the world built around him and uh, the world built for him. And uh, that, that is an important uh, tragedy uh, that uh, we have found ourselves in, which he portrayed, which Tutola portrayed, by classifying that man unnamed and rich and profane. You know? And um, the world of the dead, meaning, look, the things that you desire, the, your, cra your craziest imagination may not be realizable in this world. Your, your, your grandeur, your delusions, you know, your wings and caprices, despite the fact that you have abundance of wealth, despite the fact that you have strong influence, you may have strong military uh, backup, no matter what these strong resources at your disposal are, you may not, if those things you seek are too profane, you may not really get them in this world. They may belong to the world of the dead, which in another way of, of speaking is, is not possible. You know, and that's what we have today, Nigeria, in a cycle of um, of um, different kind of tragedy. Uh, where we should have been, we are far from. Uh, what we should have been, we are different from. And we have all that it takes to achieve uh, what we should have been and to take us to where we should have been. You know, these are the important lessons from Tutola's work, and um, the fact that this man um, chose to pursue these things to the detriment of the real world. Because um, he left the real world. He left the, the world of the reasonable man. 
he was no longer a reasonable man. And we have abundance of, uh, of uh, unreasonableness in Nigeria, in Nigeria today. We, we thank God that um, change is coming to Nigeria. We hope that that uh, will continue and that as the change process begins, we will be able to draw strong lessons and stronger lessons even from Tutola's work you know, to, to empower ourselves, to, to fortify our mind, to be able to know the ramifications of what is achievable, what is not achievable, what is real, what is not real. To be able to understand that beyond our immediate physical world that we can touch, there is this other world that is also real and full of different kind of reward system for our actions and inactions. Okay, what do you think about the writing style? Though he did the book when he wasn't educated, but he made a statement that he, he portrayed Africa in a way that he doesn't want the Westerners to see him like a copy, like Africans, like copies of how the people did. And if he had a chance, he would have you know, written something better. But irrespective of that, the writing style was part of what made him stand out. So how, what do you think it, about the writing yes, style? Yes, it, it was an original person. Uh, yes, correctly too, as he said, because he was not even exposed to so many writing styles. So he just was his own man. And so that put him uh, ahead of so many hurdles. Um, the critic descended on him, but he wanted that. Every writer wants that, you know. And uh, they were divided too. Uh, we had so many critics having so many opinions about him. And even as we speak, the, book, the work is still being studied, it's still being translated. Is still being criticized and critiqued upon by writers across the world. So I think, if anything, coming to today is a lesson for the writer of today that we have to be original. We have to stand out for something and be original in our portrayal of whatever theme we choose to preoccupy ourselves with. Okay. Is there any other thing you want to add concerning the work? As well as um, I'm wondering, you didn't say anything about the title. Okay, the drink card. Yeah. Yet, um, for me, you know, the grammatical aspects of this work, like several other critics have said, um, you just have to give a strong waiver to the man. You know, you have to give a strong waiver to the man. I doubt seriously if he had the benefit of a dictionary you know, at that time or, or any kind of a lexicon a guide to put him through what he was writing. So he was drawing from from the very scratch, from resources, intellectual resources that were hardly there. The most important thing he had for him was the gusto, the gumption to, to just forge ahead. So I will give him a very strong waiver on those. On all the, there were so many, several. I write through the book from his title, from the drink card, uh, from